Will you come to prayer with me this morning? Embracing a loving God of many names, we thank you for this day. And we ask for the continued peace and comfort along with the sovereignty and calmness for our sisters and brothers this day in Orlando as they remember and even still grieve and mourn over those they lost in their community six years ago during the tragic Pulse nightclub shooting. But as that we continue to have our minds opened and even our hearts as we become the receptors of the words that are about to be spoken this day. But may we not only hear these words, but we, may we be molded and transformed and even guided as we hear these words. I ask now that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and the words that come from my mouth, along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, be ever acceptable to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. So as we go through National Pride Month, or Pride Month, um, here in Milwaukee, of having the great honor of having declared a National Pride Month nationally throughout the entire U.S., we continue with that great sovereignty of having that pride of being exactly who we are. And last week we started a sermon series called Vibrant, Inclusive, and Progressive, and over these next several weeks we're going to look at the, the different angles of being vibrant, inclusive, and progressive in our community of faith. <clears throat> I'm sure I've shared this story a few times over the course of my reign here as your pastor, but when I was a child, I was raised in a very <coughs> prominent white middle-class community. And while I was in, raised in all places of lovely New Jersey, we look over time that if you've ever lived in the East Coast, there's lots of different things going on. But if you've lived in New Jersey, everything you've heard about the New Jersey housewives and the mob wives <laughs> are exactly true. One thing I can say about the East Coast crowd, even those from New York and the Tri-States, is that you definitely know where you stand as well as knowing your place with others when you're in their presence. And I'm sure the board can attest to that at a lot of board meetings that I <laughs> speak my mind sometimes. But, but as I've shared before, that growing up back in the 60s and 70s, and yes, I'm showing my age, was completely a different genre than what any child goes through currently, especially in those younger years of kindergarten and even those first three or four years thereafter. But anyone growing up in that era, especially up in a prominently white environment, experienced what we'd call today radical discrimination in society. And for many of us, growing up in middle-class suburbia, we all have probably experienced a more prominent white culture with very few or very mixed racial children being a part of our childhood. In your neighborhood, more than likely, you grew up with children who were not of different races or of different cultures than you. It was a rare thing in the 60s and 70s to see that children who were not white-skinned or of mixed colors being a part of your childhood. And I'm not just speaking of the brown and the black-skinned children, but those of Asian and Indian descent and even the multicultural backgrounds. I still vividly remember that back in the first grade, which was many, many moons ago, we were introduced to a new child in class who of course was someone of the black culture. I can still see in my head that some of those children were questioning to the teacher, asking why or he or she was going to be in our class since they weren't the same color as the rest of us. And today, the response, and on that day, the response that came out of the teacher's mouth still is, stays in my heart as she replied, not all children or even adults were created by God to have white skin, but that God makes us in various shades and colors, colors of the rainbow. She further shared that each of us are no different than anyone else. And for that matter, that God had created us in every shape and form that we are, and even now, that we are still loved and created by the God that we believe in. 
Many years down the road, I learned what it was like to be and or live in a mixed cultural setting. And I learned as I got older that even in some parts of the United States that there were rules or even racial laws of segregation. That there was to be no separation and quite honestly, no different of how the LGBT community was treated in those early years. How we were segregated and even oppressed and believe it or not, it still happens today in our nation and even throughout the world. Now, in scripture this morning, we heard that Peter has and was taught all of that his life. And that some parts of God's creations were unclean and not even up to Peter's standards. We know that back in the time, it was okay to eat certain types of meat, but there was others that were to be avoided. And more significantly, while compassion and care was encouraged towards your own kind of people, in this case, during that period, it was to choose, that a particular social contact with others, meaning the Gentiles and the Christians, was considered <coughs> unclean. So the Jews were to only associate with the Jews. And as so many of us have experienced that as LGBT Christians or even allies, we too have been banned and oppressed and ex exiled within society. Sadly, it still happens, but joy joyously, we are overcoming that little by little. We also experience that through the identities have how we as LGBT Christians have been and how we've been exiled in society, especially when it expresses gender identity. And we continue to experience these various types of discrimination and hatred towards each of them daily in our lives. But we also live and experience all of these, even in today's society, that there's a good example of what would be going as we prayed over the this morning and we heard in the pride liturgy that we as LGBT Christians have been on that continual search to receive that unconditional love and not even just stopping there but taking it a step further to yearn to see and to respect that unconditional respect that many even today don't receive. Think back many years. I mean, some of you are very seasoned in your years. Think back what it was like 20 years ago, even 30 years ago, if you go back that far, of what it was like living in everyday America. You know that old saying, what is good for the goose is even better for the gander. Well, last weekend was pride here in Milwaukee. This weekend we recognize national pride. But along with that, we look back at all of those who were treated so, so poorly back in the day of Stonewall and throughout LGBT history. I will say that personally, I'm a strong believer in which the desires we want to have in life should be those same desires that we give back to the world. And I know I've said this in time in and time out, but I still think that so many times, most of us only focus on the G and the L in our acronyms of the LGBTQ, XYZ, and all the other letters that have been added over the years. But what about the B, the T, the Q, the I, and the S, and so on and so forth? I mean, how many of us are guilty of sometimes forgetting that we are all the letters of that acronym, or the alphabet if you want to go to the brass tacks? Are we good Christians that we remember that each and every one of us is created in God's image. That each and every one of us has a bit of the L, the G, the B, the T, the Q, the I, the X, the Y, the Z that is within us. And if we are forgetting about many of those letters, maybe it's time to take a step back, to reevaluate just how we, re how we view our own acronyms, those acronyms that describe you, the people. It's also natural that as LGBT Christians that we have gone through our lives forgetting sometimes and forgetting those letters that we don't identify with or those letters that we have discriminated against over time. 
This is the time to stop, to reevaluate how we will continue to move forward in our lives. Spreading that unconditional love that God has taught us to have and to give. To go back and to reevaluate all of those letters that are within you. If we looked at the scripture reading this morning, I have to be quite honest that our friend Peter needed probably an attitude adjustment with all of this. And sometimes that is not the easiest thing for any of us to do within our lives. But God began that process with Peter by exposing Peter to some unfamiliar situations. Because first of all, there had been that vision that described that is described later in Acts as Peter was led out in the country one afternoon but while he was taking his little siesta he had a dream or a vision but God was now offering him something to eat and what God offered Peter was this nice juicy slice of pork and if you know Jewish culture the pork is not one of those meats that you can put on the clean list and if you recall from scripture it was considered one of those meats that was really considered unclean. I know how much of us like our bacon and our pork rinds and all those fun things, <laughs> but imagine not being able to have that back in the day. Peter, right out of the gate, explains that he can't eat pork, of which he then explains that from his childhood, that there was this one of these unclean items at the same time, God is still telling Peter that not to call anything of God that was created by God unclean. And believe it or not, that happens on three different occasions in Peter's dream, even before he wakes up from his little nap that he was taking. At the same time, Peter was still a bit unclear, blurry, even puzzled about what even made these visions that he was having. Now, we have some of the neighbors paying a house call or visiting, but then Peter arrives into town. And he was asked by this one Roman family to actually share the gospel of Christ with them. Now, you must know that this was not one of those common occurrences that even questions that Peter, let alone that any of the disciples would get in their travels through the land. But now Peter begins to preach sharing that good news of Christ. And you still have to keep in mind that there was still that difference between the Jew and the Gentile. So there was this reluctancy on the side of Peter to preach, let alone preach the gospel. But know that these were nice Gentiles. And by definitions, the word Gentile was considered a generic term for those who were not considered to be Jew. A Gentile was a term that was used along the lines of being a foreigner, someone of non-Jewish descent, someone who was different. So I guess you can say that we all probably be classified as Gentiles, Gentiles because we're all different. Now Peter comes to be utterly astonished when they showed favorable response in his faith. It was what that they showed and recognized that the spirit was actually present. We also need to remember that at this time, it was the Jews who felt that they were somewhat or had that monopoly on the spirit. And of course on God, where no one else did. So if you identified as a Gentile and were a Jew at the, t and were a Jew at the time, you really weren't supposed to have this spirit. According to Jewish law, it was only the Jews who were entitled to this. Peter, still somewhat in shock and disbelief, but knowing that the Spirit and the presence of God was everywhere, that right before his eyes, God was taking that initiative to call upon these strangers, these strange people who, in a religious community, in which Peter considered to be exclusively his people, or of his kind. Here's another example of the intermingling of the Jews, the Christians, and the Gentiles all coming together at this point in the story. There is something that we always encounter endlessly in our lives. That identifying as gay, lesbian, bisexual, even transgender, or even all the other letters, that we are hopelessly unseen and still not accepted even in society. 
we have to turn the turn the, the roles around sometimes that as LGBT people, we don't accept the straight people. Even with all the legislature and all the things that have become favorable in our community, that they're still and cannot extend that ex exclusive love that is needed. When we were kids, I'm sure that we all learned the song that says, Jesus loves the little children. All the little children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they're all precious in his sight that Jesus loves the little children of the world. Matthew's Gospel says that Jesus blesses little children and that the people brought the little children to Jesus for him to place his hands and to pray for them. Some years back, someone shared this profound statement with me that we need to live to love and when we need to live to love others as we want them to love us and love ourselves as we should love others. Believe it or not, that person that shared this with me back in the day wasn't religious whatsoever, not even going to church, but someone who said that they were spiritual, but spiritual in the sense that they do, that they do believe in God and they do believe in a spirit. If I was to pose the question, are you spiritual or are you religious? How would you answer? I know that there would be vast answers amongst this congregation alone. Some would say religious, some would say spiritual, some would say both, some might say neither. If we go back into scripture this morning with our friend Peter, we hear that Peter sat quietly contemplating the situation that he just experienced. But while he was contemplating, he asked himself how he could even consider not welcoming the people with unconditional love, that God had called to be exactly the way God has called us to be. How can we continue to be exclusive when God is calling us to be more inclusive in our ways? At this point, Peter is telling the people that in order to fix things, that we must be completely inclusive while at the same time accepting others as God accepts each and every one of us, along with the loving inclusivity of just the scripture teaches us to abide within. As I was driving in this morning, it dawned on me that during Pride Month, that even during this sermon series, it couldn't have happened at a better time that we had this sermon series. I have to think that you could probably say sometimes that things come into our life are God incidences. As we go through Pride Month and as we continue out in the world, we need to remind ourselves that we are good Christians and that we need to show that inclusive love not only within ourselves, extend it out into the world to those that we are in contact with and even those that we may not be in contact with. Challenge yourself this week. You know, I love to give those challenges. Engage in a conversation, possibly with someone that you haven't had a conversation with. It may be someone that you know. It may be someone that you know don't know. Maybe share or show that inclusive love by paying it forward next time you're in the Starbucks drive-thru. Or just extend a friendly gesture while waiting at the checkout line in the grocery store. Remember, all you got to do is love. Blessings upon each of you this morning. Amen.